Well, greetings, beloved. This is H.D. McCarty, your old uh, Razorback rabbi, coming for a few words I call bullets for the battle. How about that? There's one thing we learned when you accept Jesus, you're not in for just a life of peace, but also for a life of uh, warfare. And out of that peace and that warfare, if we look to him, we grow to be like him. And ultimately, it would be like him forever. That's the whole point. I did uh, one time a little survey of all my preaching uh, over about a five, seven-year period and realized, I couldn't believe this, that over half my sermons had to do with suffering. Can you believe that? I, I wasn't aware of it. But wherever I went, marriages were breaking up, children were dying, people were in the hospital, um, Funerals were regular, uh, emptiness was there, problems, 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 good night. Uh, we all have problems because we, because we live in a fallen world. That's what sin does to us. I had a professor one time who summarized it beautifully. He said, all sin is stupid, selfish, and sad. Isn't that something? Well, the reason we despair on earth is the sin we see around us and the sin we see in our own life. And if you haven't really dealt with despair, I would say you haven't been alive. Some of you right now are having some of the most despairing moments of your life, or you need to hear what I'm going to say today and remember it later, or pass it on to someone. But my daughter sent this to me, and I'm going to read it to you as my bullet today about despair. Uh, when we are so depressed about things. And it quotes a verse, one of my favorites, from Psalm 27, uh, verse 13, if you want to look it up. And here's what the verse said. I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. That word wait, of course, in the Hebrew means expectations. Expect God to do something. And then it said, I would have despaired unless I would see the goodness. And we know from what Paul told the Romans, all things were working out for good to those who, and it's in the continuous present, the Greek, keep on loving Jesus. See, if we keep on loving him and seeking to follow him and proving that by picking up our cross, all things work to the good, even though many times we can't see it. Now here's a devotion from one of the great devotional books of all time. Oh, how great the temptation is to despair at times. Our soul becomes depressed and disheartened. Our faith staggers under the severe trials and testing that come into our lives, especially during times of bereavement and suffering. We may come to the place where we say, I just can't bear this any longer. I'm close to despair under these circumstances. God has allowed. He tells me not to despair, but what am I supposed to do when I am at this point? What have you done in the past when you felt so physically weak? You could not do anything. You ceased from doing anything. In your weakness, you leaned on the shoulder of a strong loved one. You learn completely, you lean completely on someone else and rested, becoming still and trusting in someone else's strength. It is the same when you are tempted to despair under spiritual affliction. Once you have come close to the point of despair, God's message is not be strong and courageous. Uh, Joshua 1 6, for he knows that your strength and courage have run away. Instead, he says sweetly, be still and know that I am God. Anyway, Hudson Taylor, they said, and this is what it said in a few uh, uh, weeks before he died. He said, I'm so weak, I cannot write, I cannot read my Bible, I cannot even pray. All I can do is lie still in the arms of God as a little child, trusting him. This wonderful man of God who had such great spiritual power came to a point of physical suffering and weakness where all he could do was lie still 
and trust. And sometimes that's all we can do. This is all God asks, he concludes here, of you as a dear child. When you become weak through the fierce fires of affliction, don't try to be strong. Just be still and know that the Lord is God and know he will sustain you and bring you through the fire. God reserves his best medicine in our greatest times of need. Psalm 27 again, be strong and take heart. There's, there's our great psalm. And we would have despaired if it wasn't that we know we'll see the goodness of the Lord. That's his promise. Here's a little poem I think you'll love. Be strong. He has not failed you in the past. And he... And he, will he go and leave you to sink at last? No. He said he will hide you beneath his wings, and sweetly there in safety you then may sing. That's pretty good, isn't it? And I found that true in my life, continually, totally, and absolutely. No matter what hell I feel I've gone through, if I just endure, stay under his authority, I'll be able to sing. One of my board members uh, one time gave me one of the greatest thoughts I've ever had, and I'll pass it on to you. We were talking about my ministry and the income and the, you know, the battles and all we were in, and he said, well, Pastor, let me ask you a question. Uh, when was the last time that God let you down? <laughs> Boy, that says it all, doesn't it? Case closed. <laughs> Never. Father, thank you for these few minutes for the great heroes of our faith like Hudson Taylor. Help us to endure. And uh, when we can do nothing else, just say, Father, here I am. Please do with me what pleases you, and I'll be content. In the Lord's name, we ask it right now, Father, for everyone uh, watching this and for my own life so that Christ will be pleased and I will understand more how wonderful you really are. Amen.